you want to talk about the fact that how everybody is hiring, but nobody's hiring in tech. So yeah. you'll hear, you'll go on LinkedIn, you'll go anywhere that they're hiring, Glassdoor, what's the other places like Otta, a bunch yeah. of places. Dice, Every, some like that, yeah. yeah, they all say that, oh, we're hiring, but yeah, it seems like, well, that not seems, everybody will apply and they'll just say like, oh yeah, I heard from this company that I applied to three months later of a rejection. And it's yeah. like, all right. What do you guys mean by you're hiring if you're not hiring anybody? Because the same application will be out for months at a time. You're like, yo, I applied. And I'm, I'm just now getting a rejection three months later. And your application is still up. And it's like, all right, am I just not qualified? You'll ask other people that you know, other engineers like who are more senior and they don't have a job. And they're like, yeah, I applied for that same role. And I have not heard back from them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of trying, we're trying to figure out like... You're hiring, but not really hiring. Yeah. What, like, what's going on in tech? Because it seems like tech is just, it's up, but at the same time, it's it's in a limboed state of like, yo, we have so much money here in tech, but nobody could get a job. Yeah. yeah. And people will, will say like, yeah, no, we, we're kind of like understaffed. It's like, yeah, but nobody is hiring. I don't understand. Like, I know a bunch of engineers that don't have jobs. What I keep hearing from people is that they're saying like nobody wants to work, which is weird because like you're saying people are applying and they're not getting replies back and the application is still up. I think what it is, is that like ever since COVID, people are starting to demand more yeah. and companies don't want to give it to them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I think a lot of people who are already established in positions, they had to accept life to be a certain way. And I feel like they're just like resentful that people are out here like actually asking for reasonable things now. Yeah. Like yeah. reason like reasonable time off, like childcare help, paternity leave, maternity leave. Um there's so many people that are against like reducing the work week, but Europe yeah. is on top of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think like a lot of I think the hustle culture is so so ingrained in the US and like nobody really wants to give that up because then it's like how am I going to give these strangers or this new generation of people things that I couldn't have and I had to sacrifice like I had to sacrifice time with my family I had to sacrifice my health and now these people are demanding it and like that's weird like you know I feel like some people would be resentful or conflicted in it and I think nobody's willing to say it honestly yeah, yeah. that's what I, that's what I think it's yeah. really happening yeah, adding to that too, I think that it's like there is a push and pull between like employer and employee. I think there's a couple of reasons for this too. And like specifically on that point too, I think that during COVID, a lot of businesses, they reduced their staff down to like a skeleton crew. Yeah. And then they realized that you if don't need they, that many people. Yeah, well, it's that. But the other side of that is that they're offloading those responsibilities more and more onto the skeleton crew, right? So every other person who's remaining is taking on more and more responsibility. And so everyone is doing a job and a half, right? Um, I'm seeing this. But in, there's no pay increases exactly, either. Exactly. There's no pay increases. I'm seeing this in so many different fields, tech, non-tech. I'm seeing this in um, <clears throat> very, very, you know, traditionally unrelated fields that you wouldn't think about. Um, and so I think it's like both of those things are occurring at once in terms of like the staffing and then like what people want because people got a, a, a taste of a life that was better and more yeah. fulfilling plus companies are like oftentimes most of the time these companies are incentivized to basically try to get as much labor out of you while giving you as little as possible right and so the idea is that as long as you're because payroll is the biggest expense for any company right right yeah. and so as long as you're like pushed just to the brink where you're there's a very small band of like you're overworked but you have just enough money to survive, but not enough to necessarily change your socioeconomic status. Because you're too tired. Exactly. You're <laughs> kept captive right there. And so I think that there's a push and pull between those two forces. And I think that specifically with tech, there's a lot of um, employer first practices that are really toxic for employees oh i don't know um, what you mean by that you got to go into those details yeah so specifically with things like you see we're hiring we're hiring you're hiring and you apply and you don't get it 
there's a lot of things like we can just go through them. Like some of them, like the overview is that sometimes companies are posting jobs specifically in tech too. Like this is more I'm talking about specifically tech are posting jobs that are being filled internally, right? They're also sometimes posting jobs that have already been reserved for um, work international workers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and but because of certain laws and mandates, they have to they have to maintain the image that these jobs are attainable by domestic workers um, because there's a lot of like illegality and illegality and struggles with like whether or not they're sending jobs to like you know international like places like you know. Uh, or they're keeping them for domestic workers. And so there's that aspect too. And then I think also there is also, so the, I think it's important to, to note that like, this is all artificial, right? There's no actual like sudden, like decrease in capacity for tech. The, 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 the least artificial part of it is there was a huge hiring surge right when COVID like hit. Because everyone moved to Zoom and you know remote work, and there was a huge explosion of that, right? And so, tech companies needed to get a bunch of workers just to hire all of a sudden, right? People were kind of relocating, um, and then I think that after COVID, they realized that they overextended themselves, and it wasn't even just since the pandemic. It's actually been this like ten year period. There's like uh, there's, there's been this past ten years. It's been a huge growth in tech, but similarly the economy goes through these roughly 10 year cycles of huge growth and then a huge crash, right? We've seen it 2008, you know, we're seeing it every roughly 10, 12 years. And even that is an artifact of the way that capitalism is keeping things turning, right? And so all of these things together create an environment where it appears that there's a lot of jobs and then, and we haven't even gotten to the, bogus requirements right like, you know all these things you need but even, even without touching on that a lot of these companies are saving face or either hiring internally or let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they actually are reading these things because i've seen a lot of retorts to this online that's like oh just because you're not hearing back doesn't mean the job is could just be going to someone else right mm -hmm. I, I hear these excuses right but then kind of like you were saying months later it's still up there right and one of the things these companies are doing is they're oftentimes stockpiling applicants because they're anticipating needing like hiring needs in the future and so they're thinking like okay we're, this is where we're going to plan to grow again and instead of like posting the jobs at that time it's advantageous for them to have a backstore of applicants that they think is worth interviewing, right? And it, it, it kind of sucks because in, in one sense, there is like a silver lining of like hopefulness there, but it's like this idea that like the workers should be hoping for scraps, right? You shouldn't be hoping that, oh, maybe in, in four or five months when they need someone, they might eventually get to Yeah, yeah. that's terrible because yeah, <laughs> I might as well be an employee at that point because you're like, yo, you're you're on reserve. Yeah. It's yeah. like, nah, yeah. um, nah. That's hilarious because earlier I was life. like, it sounds like they're just like, it's um, it's a game of like, who's going to budge first? Like, are the companies going to raise their salaries and their benefits or are people just going to be so sick of not having a job that they're just going to accept the scraps? Exactly. That's yeah. a huge aspect of literally the artificial boom and bust of capitalism. And we, 